Whew, it is finally Friday. I think we got our rain over with for today. I may I have just changed so. it. But I know they, uh, <laughs> it was supposed to rain every day this week and, and we, other than Monday, we have missed it all um, running the route. We were supposed to get caught in it several times and was able to skip it. But uh, maybe, we'll see. Well, we just barely got our ball game in last night. We did not. Barely. We, um, we had to take pictures at five and then uh, we went over, our game was at 6.45 and about 7.15 it started raining and they try, I will give the park, they did try, but it got to the point, the wind was blowing so bad and the rain was coming down so hard, our pitcher couldn't even throw a strike mm -hmm. and usually she's a strike every time kind of person and I, I told a couple of the, the people standing beside me, I said, this is getting dangerous, that softball getting wet, yeah. you know, all it takes Slip. is hitting, you know. And them people don't think about them softballs coming at you fast. Well, and, and that's... Dude, when we was in high school, you know, we had some really good pitchers. They was pitching in the 90s, you know, low 90s in high school. And the girls' softball team was practicing, so we was going to go over and just crank some home runs. It's a different animal because it's oh, yeah. coming up instead of coming down like a baseball, and it's fast. Yeah, well, and it, and it's harder to watch when they're fishing and release the ball and stuff too. But yeah, she, and and that's what I told that the guy standing beside me. I said she keeps trying to throw harder and harder, trying to get it there with the wind not mm -hmm. affecting it, and then the ball getting wet. They tried to dry it. Finally, the umpire said, "Look, I can't. I don't even know if these are strikes or balls. I can't tell." And they finally called the ball game. So uh, I don't know how they're going to do that if they because of the damage. They may not be able to make them up, but. I'd rather them just not make it up than be hurt. So yeah, that's true. Either way, well, how's we got life a new car. Oh yeah, life's been great. We got a Looks new like car. Those old Toyota Helix stickers on them. It's a it's a eighty series cart, and Toyota fans have been the number mm -hmm. one. I can see um, why. There's even been some that buy them that have an old Toyota that matches right beside it. I mean, <laughs> that's cool. Which I, I like the old Toyotas. I like the new Toyotas. I like Toyota period, but um, that's not everybody's cup of tea. There's going to be a lot of people that love that box, but there's also going to be a lot of people that say that's, that's just ugly. So I like it. I like the color of it. I like the design of it. I think it's going, I think it's going to sell pretty quick. We got it on the truck Wednesday. That's cool. um, well, I see something here. I had you order this set of extensions for me remember that a long time ago. long time ago yep and dude i love this set you got to talk about that that set there um impact grade so that's great but also the locking extensions um not only does it come with the most popular size uh normally that i see here but it also comes with the longer sets as well yep. You can put them together if you want to. Of course, you're gonna have a little bit of torque loss. I know everybody likes to talk about that. Oh, so, a little torque loss talk. But uh, what is that? A let's see, it was a three, uh, six, ten. This one's probably a twenty-four. I guess. I think so. Yeah. I, I guess that one's probably a eighteen or so. I don't know if it has it on there or not. I the, we got and some, they're USA made too. Yeah, so I cool. I like the fact that it's um, that one has a three there. Um, I like the fact that they lock. Mm -hmm. That's my number one thing, and um, I, I like the the design of the lock too. Um, with that uh, little lever here to push that ball out, it locks it. Um, some of ours, let's see here. That is an awesome set if you guys are looking for a set of quarter inch extensions. S A X P five L very good extensions the only the only thing that i have some customers complain about which i i don't see it as a big it, they like the ones that you, we have a set that you can just push the socket on yeah the only thing about that is they're they're quicker to wear out mm -hmm. with this one pushing it out if you're able to push it on without pulling that down that means you're pushing the lock um lever back right. this one here's got enough resistance that it doesn't lie Plus, it's impact grade, so that's another reason that you're not able to do that. It's it's got to be built a little bit more um, for the vibrations and the hammer and impact on it. So, yeah, if you're in the market for extensions, um, that's a good set. 
I people argue with me. I don't really know why I would ever buy one that doesn't lock. Mm -hmm. um, why have people say, man, I'd rather have chrome extensions? I've never had, I'd rather have impact extensions. That way they work on anything. It don't matter. Well, and you know, I've, I have people say that on the sockets too. That's our number one um, conversation on the tool truck when people's buying so sockets is, well, I'd rather have chrome. Why? Like, I understand having one chrome set for that time to where mm -hmm. it, the, the impact Top socket may be a little, a little too thick. Which, you know, we've compared the ADV with the Chrome. They're so close. I've never come in a position yeah, to where it wouldn't either. work. Um, I, I, every, I ain't gonna say every socket. 99% of my sockets that are used, other than a spark plug socket, are impact. Yeah. Well, and I've went- to I say no advantage of a Chrome socket on a ratchet versus you know, other than the, sometimes you're going to hit a clearance issue, but it's, man, it's so marginal. Like, I think you could get by with just a set of Silver Eagle, you know, chrome. Yeah, the, the chrome is going to be a, a lot, uh, in my opinion, I'm not going to hardly use them. Because um, I'm always going to use an impact. We went to Northeast um, to one of the student programs they're getting ready to graduate and stuff like that. And that was my main thing is why buy Chrome right off the bat when you know you're gonna be using an impact right off the bat. Yep. I mean, I would rather borrow a Chrome socket one time mm -hmm. than to beat my Chrome sockets to death because I'm gonna use an impact every single time. Yep. So um, that is true. that's just my opinion. But um, you also, you buy these kits like this, you get it out a lot cheaper than the Chrome mm -hmm. socket. So, uh, a tech just starting out can buy this whole set here for the price of what it's going to cost for one of your chrome sockets. Yeah. And, and and chrome sockets is, um, you buy a cheap set of chrome sockets, you're going to know it quick. Absolutely. Um, just for the fact that they're going to round a lot quicker and also um, they'll bust a lot easier too. Mm -hmm. Even on a ratchet, I think we've all broke um, a chrome socket, a cheap chrome socket on a ratchet. So if, if it was me, I would start out with these. And that's what I tell everybody. It saves you money, gets you more for your buck. Um, when we go to the student classes like that, I don't even talk to them about boxes. That's the number thing, number one thing they want to talk about right out of the gate. And I just tell them, that. let's let's talk about sockets, ratchets, mm -hmm. impacts. Screwdrivers, um, prime Screwdrivers. Um, I like selling boxes just as much as any other person. But if you're a student at a college and you're fisting in, well, let's talk tools because that's what the the business is going to hire you they're going to want you to have tools so well i know last week on the video somebody asked if we could talk about i think the part number is like a msc4 vintage msc4 vintage and i might have the first couple of letters mixed up but yeah that seems like a cart msc4 is a cart and then the vintage um I don't know if it's one of the 80s. Yeah, it, I think I think it's actually that part number right there. Yeah, because it's got it showing in transit, and I just got it Wednesday, so. Well, there you go. He was asking about it. We'll we, just show it. How about that? <laughs> yeah, we, t we <laughs> talked about it and didn't even realize it. But, uh, yeah, that um, the MSC 4s, uh, uh, they're a great starter cart just because they're a lot more price friendly. Um, they do have the pry bar holders inside of them, screwdriver holders. Uh, it allows you on those to actually lock the top and not lock the drawers. Um, a lot of a lot of my techs, it got a lever. It has a lever yeah. at the back. Mm -hmm. See, in um, some of in our JSC carts, the key when you unlock the top, when the top comes open, it allows the drawers to open. I like that style because it's easy. But if I was going to let people borrow my tools and I had a scanner, I'd want to lock that scanner up. It, See, I'm just the opposite. I don't want to have to open the lid to open my drawers because I use the top of it to put stuff on. Yeah. That's what I didn't like about the cheaper roll cars. Like I actually took a pair of bolt cutters and cut the rod that pushed down on that Harbor Freight car. Right. So I could have junk on the top and still open the drawers. I think we're, I think we're saying the same thing. Because what I was saying is I like to leave this locked. I want to have stuff in here that oh, okay. I don't want people to have. Um, like I my, just want to be able to open the drawers with the top. That's drawers. what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. I want to be able to leave these unlocked. Mm -hmm. 
when I when I leave or whatever it might be, I want to leave this locked and these be unlocked. Because I, I do want to let people use my tools, but my scan tools and stuff, I want to keep them locked up. I want to be the one getting them or anything else for that matter that I right. just don't want people. Um, a voltmeter, I don't like letting people borrow voltmeters. Um, just for you always get them fuses blown in them. every time it seemed like every <laughs> time fails. I went to do I've uh, blown my voltmeter out and almost every time it's ever come back it's had the fuse blown in yeah anytime I was doing an amp draw test or something like that the fuse was always blown every single time and nobody knows who did it at yeah, that point it, it was working when oh, I yeah. brought it, back. it was working so <laughs> that's just one of those things so um, we also been talking about torque wrenches this week. We got the half inch torque wrenches in, so we've been talking about those a lot. Took me a while to get them in, but I've got plenty. Got some pre sold. Do those so. go up to three hundred or? Uh, some go to two fifty. Some go to three hundred. I can't remember which ones I ordered. Probably these are the two fifty. So we uh, got them at Expo, so I got a little bit of deal on them. Those digital torque wrenches are the way to go, though. Man. It is. Um, it's just getting people trained that it don't need that extra. Yeah, a little bit. You know, a lot of a lot of people on the, the click style to click, and they'll go just a little bit more. Uh, electric torque wrenches hate that because mm -hmm. it's trying to watch the calibration and everything, so it doesn't like it all at all. Um, another thing, we had a district meeting. I know we're a tool truck, but we're going to talk tennis shoes too. Okay. That's the new tennis shoes that they got. Oakley come out with these. Um, we've been showing them off and everything. Uh, I've actually, she ordered her a pair of them, which this is her pair. She's been wearing them. They really light, but we wanted to talk about them on the video today. So cool. she offered to, to do without them today so we could talk about them. But super light, super flexible. Um, just another option. I know I know techs don't wear tennis shoes all the time, but that, that I mean, it looks like a good tennis shoe just to wear out. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't, we don't stay in the shop all the time, so. Uh, we do have power probes that we've been teaching people how to use this week too. Power talking that's about probably the best tool for all around electrical. Work I would right trade there. my test light every day of the week. Absolutely. If if somebody gave me the option to have a power probe, a uh, power probe or a test light, that would be it because I can actually provide power and ground. Mm -hmm. I know I can do it with a test light, um, but I can't. I can't really do it controlled yeah. as well. Um, I have to find a power and it's source. It's always the ground. Always. The ground. <laughs> It's easier it just is. to put it on there, test the ground, be like, okay, it's ground. That's it. Um, <laughs> Save all that trouble. I can't tell you how many windows I've rolled up with a power probe. Um, yeah. We've all done it with a battery before the power probe, mm -hmm. um, but it was so quick to do it with those. And they, the cords are freaking, ex you know, you can wrap around the car 15 times before you realize that you're walking in one direction and not going back. But, yeah. um, but between the two, they, I like the digital. Um, test lots power probes way to go yeah and there's a lot of tests that that walks you through they got a good little mm -hmm. um, video on how to to do those power probes probably one of the best technologically advanced tools that come out in in my lifetime well i like that talking and to scan tools pretty much yeah i like talking to them at expo because they always have really neat ideas that they're mm -hmm. trying to get um incorporated into right. their tool and they have a, a little um, car that they always set up. Um, it's like one that you see kids riding around in, but it's got different, uh, it lets you do different test procedures mm -hmm. on it. I want one of those so bad just so I can show customers how to use power probes. I'll tell you uh, another thing they make it I love too, and I bought it on the Mack truck. It's that wireless temperature probe. Yes. God, that thing is, I wished I would have bought the second one. You know, you can buy the second add-on yep. for it. I, don't, I wish I'd have done that. That way you could have rear air, ambient temperature in the front. So we right. actually have a customer that we've got one ordered for. Um, the big thing on those is AC work. It mm -hmm. makes it so, because when you start doing AC work, you're going off a of feeling. Yeah. I mean, does it feel cold? Yep, feels cold. Um, and we've all used the, the little, little bitty. Probe. Yeah, yeah we, we stick them probe. in there. and. Then I see people using their voltmeters with a temperature probe on there. I like the power probe one myself. I like them because they're accurate. Because right. I bought the little, I call them like the meat thermometers, yep. like this one. Yep. Right here. And um, I bought two of them. And you can switch sides with them. And the one that was hotter will be hotter on the colder side. Like when you switch yep. them, they're never, 
spot on. So you know they tell you to test those in water and stuff like that. I like the I like the digital. I like the mm -hmm. fact that I can um, have it with the with a power probe. That's got a nice little screen readout yep. and everything. Um, I like, like it too because you can shut the door on the car, have the reader outside. A lot of people don't realize how important that is. Yep. You're getting that, you're introducing that outside air if the wind mm -hmm. blowing and stuff. It'll actually throw your 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 digital ones like that off yep. because it's not. Uh, the doors are not sure it's not controlled and that's what i want to know mm -hmm. when, when i get in is, is is this side actually blowing colder than this side so the the, the deal one is the one i like yeah. as well but like you said uh, i did some work on my sister's car this and it's weekend. not expensive to add that second one no right it's there. not very economically yeah it's it's not car. we he his one out he's had it for several years so we've got him another one ordered um but he don't want to do an ac job without it mm -hmm. i mean and i wouldn't either because a lot of th people think that AC blows the same temperature all year long. It don't. It's, you know, yeah. most people say 30 something degrees below what it is mm -hmm. outside, but uh, it's getting AC season quick. And yeah, you better order some of them. That's right. <laughs> um, we we ordered his and, and a couple of more, so they Ooh. always sell out. I could put 10 on here and I'd sell 12. Yeah. So that's just something we try to keep um, from here to there. Most of the time, we don't we don't keep enough to put ten on here. They're selling as soon as people see them, but we do have the AC gauges ready to sell um, as well. So, well, it's time. All right, guys. Like always, thanks for hanging out with us. Hopefully, y'all have a good weekend. If you liked the video, hit that thumbs up. Check over for merchandise, cool tools, and discount codes down here. And if you're not subscribed, click that button. The 28th of May is the meetup. It's going to be here to shop. Matt Michael's going to be here selling some cool tools so y'all come get them. See ya.